For the one in six couples with infertility worldwide, up to 50% of the time, there's a male factor component. When I'm reviewing semen analysis with my patients and their poor results, one of the first questions is why? And the very second question is, what can I do about it? Now, if you Google or if you ask friends and family, one of the first things that will come up is, what is your underwear? <laughs> there are a lot of people will recommend switching from tight-fitting underwear or briefs to loose-fitting underwear or boxers if there's a male fertility component. But what does the evidence show? In this video, we're going to review the evidence and I will answer the question, boxers versus briefs, does it matter for your fertility? Let's get started. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I love educating on reproductive health. I am a reproductive endocrinologist and OBGYN practicing for over 15 years. And it is so important to understand all aspects of reproductive health. So much of the time we're focused, the research, the testing, the treatment is focused on the female part of the reproduction process. But the male factor is so important. It's up to 50% of the genetics. And we're only really recently starting to pay attention to male factor fertility and how important it is for helping you start your family. Now, I've had several videos here on YouTube talking about male factor fertility and educating on certain aspects. Check out my video on understanding your semen analysis results. Check out the other video on how to prepare for your semen analysis so you get accurate results. And there's lots more information here. In this video, we're answering a very specific question that my patients ask me all the time. Boxers versus briefs. Does it matter for male fertility? There's three things we're going to cover. Number one, we're going to go over where did this come from? Like, why do so many people talk about this? What is the origin of the worry of what type of underwear you're wearing? Number two, we're going to go over the scientific studies that try to answer this question. And number three, I will tell you exactly what I tell my patients. So first of all, where did this worry originate? Why are people so concerned about what kind of underwear men are wearing when they are trying to start their family? Well, it comes from understanding that sperm is sensitive to temperature. So sperm is housed in the testicles, which are inside the scrotum, which is outside of the body and it's away from body temperature. The testicles are on average about two to three degrees cooler than the rest of the body. And that we do know that high temperatures can impact the function and parameters of sperm. And so the thought is if somebody has poor sperm parameters and it might be because they're wearing tight fitting underwear or tight clothing, something that's bringing the scrotum closer to body temperature and actually exposing sperm to more heat than they need or that they're supposed to see. That is the origin of this worry. So what does the evidence say? There are three studies that I found that I think really delve deep into this question and can help us understand what the evidence shows. So the first study we'll go over published in Human Reproduction, a well-respected journal in 2018 is entitled Type of Underwear Worn and Markers of Testicular Function Among Men Attending a Fertility Center. So this study is a cross-sectional study of 656 men who are attending a fertility clinic in Boston from 2000 to 2017. They're self-reporting the type of underwear that they are wearing and comparing semen analysis results or sperm counts. The average age of the men was 36 years old. Average BMI or body mass index was 26.3. So age and obesity can impact sperm function and parameters. They're trying to show what are some things that we controlled for. 53% of the men reported wearing boxers or loose fitting underwear. And on average, they had a 25% higher sperm count compared to men who were wearing briefs or tight fitting underwear. The authors said, hey, this is what we found, but we're not sure if this is generalizable to the rest of the population. They were really focusing just on couples that were already struggling with fertility and going to a fertility clinic. And they said they were really honest too. They didn't control for a lot of other variables that are known to impact sperm function, like smoking, heavy alcohol use, exercise, and other chronic health issues. The second study I want to share with you was published in 1996 from the Lancet Journal, another well-respected journal. It's titled Tight Fitting Underwear and Sperm Quality. And they looked to answer the boxers versus briefs question in a slightly different way. They looked at 501 couples that were trying to get pregnant, so they weren't diagnosed with infertility. They just asked men what type of underwear that they were wearing and looked to see how long it took the couples to conceive. They looked at the odds of being diagnosed with infertility based on the men's underwear. They also looked at whether changing underwear 
would change the outcome. And the study found that there was no difference. So boxers versus briefs in a population that has not been diagnosed with infertility, it did not seem to impact how long it took people to get pregnant, whether they were diagnosed with infertility or not. And switching underwear type didn't seem to make a difference either. It's an interesting way of looking at it. The third study I want to share with you is published most recently, published in 2022 by McKinnon et al. It is entitled Male Personal Heat Exposures and Fecundability. It's a preconception cohort study. Fecundability is the probability of getting pregnant in a certain amount of time. And a cohort study is looking at two different groups. And just preconception means they're looking at them before they conceive. This study analyzed data from over 3,000 men in the U.S. and Canada enrolled in a preconception cohort cohort study between the years 2013 and 2021. When the men enrolled, they were asked about and reported on several different types of heat exposure, such as using saunas, hot tubs, seat warmers in their car, and what type of underwear they were using. Pregnancy status was updated every eight weeks. Of all the different heat exposures that were looked at in these 3,000 plus men over this long period of time, there were only two things that seemed to really impact sperm function and time to pregnancy. Number one is a febrile illness within the last three months. And number two is hot tub use. Using a hot tub more than three times in a month could dramatically impact male factor fertility. You know what was not included in causing an impact was sauna use, laptop use, using seat heaters, time sitting, and finally type of underwear. The associations were strongest for men over the age of 30. Those are the studies. Now, what about my recommendations to my patients? I hope you are enjoying this channel. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you get my weekly videos and updates. And please tell me in comments other things that you want to learn about. This idea actually came from my patients, of course, but also from comments on this channel. So don't forget to let me know what you want to hear about. Now, for my recommendations. So as far as my recommendations, if you have watched other videos here, you know I am all about the healthier you are, the more reproductively healthy you're going to be, but everything in moderation. So I love to talk about nutrition, exercise, stress management, the right supplements, and really decreasing things like excessive alcohol. Marijuana can impact sperm and egg function. So I do think it's important to pay attention to lifestyle optimization. So talk to your doctor about your particular situation. As far as heat and sperm parameters in my patients, I do ask about fever within the last three to six months. It's one of the first questions I ask if we have a poor semen analysis, especially in the time of COVID or you're getting the flu, you can get a temporary drop in sperm counts and function that will eventually go back up, you know, after recovery. I do ask about hot tubs and sauna use. I know that study said that saunas didn't make a difference. I still talk to my patients about that and I really try to to limit that. As far as boxers versus briefs, you know, I talk to my patients about, hey, listen, follow your preference. I don't think the evidence is so strong that I need to recommend to every single one of my patients to switch from briefs to boxers. If it's something that somebody wants to do just to sort of see if it improves things or feels like one of the many changes that they're doing to optimize fertility and lifestyle, that is an option. But I don't believe that the evidence really supports that anyone who's trying to conceive should absolutely switch their underwear to loose fitting underwear. I hope you learned something today. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have, subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly videos and make sure and follow me here, Instagram, TikTok, and sign up for my newsletter if you wanna stay up to date with fertility in the media and what I am up to. It's a great way to stay in touch. And as always, stick around for more learning.